بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. Brothers and sisters in Islam, let us first have the proper intention in our hearts to attend the lesson for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have started by the beginning of the month of Rabi'ul Awwal a series of lessons highlighting the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have so far talked about the life of the Prophet in Mecca, starting from the events that surrounded the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to this world and his birth and how he was raised by his grandfather then by his uncle. We'll continue insha'Allah ta'ala talking about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. Before he migrated and after he migrated Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Around 12 years after receiving the revelation when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was about 52, in the month of Dhul Hijjah and during the Hajj season, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met with a group from the people of Al Madina. We did mention before that although Mecca at the time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born was not an Islamic city at that time. It was inhabited by idolists, those who used to worship the idols. They had inside the Kaaba and outside it 360 idols that they used to worship. And they used to have in their houses idols that they used to worship. To the extent that some of them would even make a statue as an idol out of dates. Then when they feel hungry they would eat it. And they used to worship them. The Prophet والسلام, after receiving the revelation, he started inviting people to embrace Islam, to believe in Allah جل, as the creator and not to worship the idols. However, the number of Muslims was progressing slowly in Mecca. The number was increasing, but slowly. And many took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as their enemy. They harmed him, they harmed his companions, and they inflicted different types of torment on his companions, but they were patient. Now, 12 years after receiving the revelation, during the season of Hajj, so although we said 
the people of Mecca were pagans, idolists, but Mecca was very important destination for the Arabs at that time. And they used to come from different parts of the Arabian Peninsula to Mecca each year, especially during the season of Hajj. So they used to know Kaaba is a blessed building. And they used to come to it and they turn around as making tawaf and so on. But they were on worshipping the idols. When they come to Mecca from different parts of the Arabian Peninsula, the Prophet used to take that opportunity to pass by them and invite them to embrace Islam. Until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met 12 from the prominent figures of al Madina, And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam invited them to embrace Islam, which they did. And they pledged allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was known as Bay'atul Aqaba Al-Ula, the first allegiance given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the people of al Madina. These Muslims returned to al Madina and started inviting others to Islam as well. The following year they came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but this time there were 70. So already the 12 put effort throughout that he they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the following year and they were 70. The Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam assigned Mus'ab ibn Umayr one of the reciters of the Qur'an, one of the knowledgeable companions, to go to them to Medina to teach them the rules of the religion. Many people since then started embracing Islam until every household in Medina had at least one Muslim in it. Around 13 years after the revelation, Allah ordered the Muslims to immigrate to Medina. That was known as Al-Hijrah. And from that time of Al-Hijrah, it marked the lunar calendar, as you know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered the believers to leave Mecca and immigrate to Medina. At that time, immigrating to Medina was an obligation upon the believers. So whoever was able to immigrate to Medina had to. So they started immigrating, but since they were weak and they were afraid of the non-believers not letting them to go or maybe attacking them, they started immigrating to Medina at night. At night. One by one, group by group, they made their way to Medina as the Prophet ﷺ told them. So the immigration was an order from Allah Azza wa Jal. It wasn't out of being afraid of the non-believers. The heart of the Prophet ﷺ is so brave. The bravest man, the bravest human being is Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He was given the strength of 40 people. 40 people. Even Umar عنه, who was very strong and well built as he was known, when he came to kill the Prophet before embracing Islam, and he went to the house of Al-Arqam, 
and they let him in when he stood in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet grabbed him and said to him, isn't it about time, O Umar, that you embrace Islam? That his legs couldn't carry him. He fell to his knees and he said the two testifications of faith and he embraced Islam. The immigration to Medina was not looking for money or wealth, was not looking for a social status, because as we mentioned before, the non-believers of Mecca came to the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said to him, tell your nephew, what does he need for the sake of leaving this da'wah, this call? If he wants money, we would gather money for him until he becomes the richest amongst us. If he wants a social tribal status, we'll assign him as a king, if he wants to. And we promise that we will not do anything without consulting with him. But that wasn't the purpose of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who wasn't looking for dunya, wasn't looking for the pleasures of this life, because he knows all the pleasures of this life will soon perish. His heart was attached to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to his uncle, O oh my uncle, if they were to place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, in order to leave this cause, I will never leave it. Until I'll die for its sake, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant me victory. So the Prophet did not immigrate because he was coward from the non-believers, never. This does not befit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet used to go to the leaders of Quraysh where they meet and he used to talk to them and never ever felt afraid of them. He was doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered. And that is confirmed in the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started sending the believers to Mecca and he wasn't the first one, rather he was nearly the last one to immigrate to Medina. So the one who is afraid will try to flee the first one. But the Prophet wasallam guided Muslims to immigrate to Medina and they started group by group and at night. And the Prophet wasallam was waiting for the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until the day came, he went to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and told him that Allah had ordered him to immigrate to Medina. Abu Bakr was waiting for this moment. He asked the Prophet if he is allowed to be his companion in this journey and the Prophet ﷺ agreed. Abu Bakr started crying out of happiness. So the Prophet ﷺ immigrated to Medina with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The non-believers who plotted to kill the Prophet ﷺ did not succeed. When they went to the house of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet left the house without them seeing him. And he instructed Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu to sleep in his bed. And he covered himself with the same cloak the Prophet used to cover himself with. So the non-believers continued waiting outside, thinking that the Prophet is asleep in his bed. So they were waiting for him to come out so they can kill him. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed through them and he was reciting verses of Surah Yaseen 
Yaseen Wal Quran Al Hakim until he reached Fa'ushaynahum Fahum La Yubsirun. Meaning we placed like a barrier on their eyes, veil on their eyes, so they cannot see. They didn't see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He went to Abu Bakr and uh, they continued their way to Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Al Medina. Muslims were waiting with passion to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were even believers who had never seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before. They were in Medina, between Medina and Mecca, about 450 kilometers. So they believed in the Prophet through those 12 prominent figures from Medina and Mus'ab ibn Umayr, who was sent by the Prophet to teach them Al-Islam. So Muslims in Medina grew in number quickly. And those later on were called Al-Ansar, the supporters. And those who immigrated with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were called the immigrants Al-Muhajirun. So Al-Muhajirun and Al-Ansar. Al-Muhajirun, those who immigrated with the Prophet and they were believers. Al-Ansar, the supporters in Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised both of them. Allah ta'ala said in the Quran, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ How beautiful is it for those ones, the immigrants and the supporters, when they read this ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted them. Radiallahu anhum. So when he is reciting Quran, and while he is reciting, he recites this verse, that he is accepted by Allah azza wa jal. And even other Muslims, they recite this verse as well. And they know that those ones are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet والسلام, went to Medina. He was riding his camel. And every clan in Medina, because people used to live a tribal life, so they have clans. So every clan wanted the Prophet to build his mosque and houses in the region, in their area. But the Prophet وسلم, as he was riding his camel, he let it free and he said, leave it for it is ordered. So the camel started walking, female camel, and everyone was watching where it's going to sit until it sat where they built the Prophet's mosque and Masjid al-Nabawi and the houses for the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By the time they were building the mosque and the houses for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam stayed at the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. He is related to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his mother's side, from the clan of Al-Najjar. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to his house, he had a double story house. So as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went inside, he didn't feel comfortable Going to the going upstairs to the top floor because the Prophet وسلم, is in the ground floor. So he came to the Prophet and told him, Oh Messenger of Allah, I cannot go upstairs when you are here. 
So take that section which is upstairs and I'll live with my family in the ground floor. And the Prophet وسلم, stayed at his house until they finished building the mosque and the houses. Now the houses were not mansions or even as normal houses now. It's like small rooms. The ceiling even wasn't that high. So if you were to see the chamber where the Prophet ﷺ used to sleep, it's very low and small one, like one for Lady Aisha radiallahu anha, another one for another one and so on. So it consists of small rooms. This was the place where the Prophet ﷺ lived. Some people in Medina embrace Islam, including some of the famous ones and the leaders of other than Muslims. One of them is Abdullah ibn Salam. He was a Jewish scholar because he read in the previous books. He was a scholar. So he knows about these matters. Can only a prophet know them. So he asked the Prophet, the Prophet said, ask me. He asked him three questions. What is the first food for the people of paradise? What is the first sign of the day of judgment? He's referring to the major signs. And why the child is born either resembling his father or his mother. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, Jibreel السلام, has just given me the answers for these questions. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, the first food for the people of paradise is an appendix to the liver of the big fish. You can uh, check it as well. You can see it. Next to the liver, there is kind of appendix. It's very tasty. This is the first food for the people of paradise. Amongst the first signs of the Day of Judgment, the major ones, is the fire that will emerge from Adan in Yemen and will drive people to their assembly place. And if at the time of intercourse between the husband and the wife, whosoever liquid dominates, then the child will be born resembling that party. So if at that time the seminal liquid of the man was to be stronger dominating than that of the woman, then the child will be born resembling his father otherwise will be born resembling his mother. So after hearing the answers, and these answers can only be answered by the Prophet wasallam, since he did not read in the previous books. He wasn't a person who was able to read and write. And Abdullah ibn Salam knew that the Prophet wasallam did not learn how to read and write. So if he were to answer these questions, that would be through revelation, and that confirms that he is prophet. So after he heard this, he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu annaka Muhammadur Rasulullah. He embraced Islam. You will realize as we go through the life of the prophet briefly, as we mentioned, that uh, the rules were revealed mainly in al Medina, Whereas in Mecca, the Prophet وسلم, for 13 years after he received the revelation, was talking to the non-believers to make them embrace Islam. Insha'Allah Ta'ala will stop up to here and will continue next week. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, we say La ilaha illallah three times.